Hello, this is Dr. Rebecca Wood, and this is our week four lecture. And this week, rather than focusing on everything in our literature during the lecture, I'm going to be focusing on writing a literary paper in MLA style. There's been a lot of questions on how to do that, and so I thought that I would focus the lecture on that material. And so we will be still discussing our literature on the discussion board, and there is plenty of material in the lectures and resources folder about our literature to explore. So this week's lecture will explore ideas, make connections, and document sources. And so one thing that we're doing in our paper one and also we'll be doing something similar in paper two is analyzing literature in tandem or maybe even more than two pieces of literature and so we're reading some very deep literature in our textbook and so I would like for us to also study some literature that's a little more uh, pop culture and so movies and books that are more mainstream and so this is my slide to kind of get us started uh, what could the 1967 version of William Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew that was both Italian and American um, so there's English spoken and it's set in Italy so it's kind of a an amalgam of both countries and what would that movie have to do with the ancient Chinese philosopher Mencius who wrote that man's nature is good and then just because I couldn't resist the bad joke I ask is our paper to be or not to be so we have some very different sources here we have one of the sources in our textbook that we've already discussed this term and then we have one of my favorite movies even though it's definitely got some strangeness to it and um, humor and of course it has the wonderful movie star duo of Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton um, and so I do recommend the movie if you ever have time to watch it so how are we going to do this um, first I would do my brainstorming and pre-writing because I would never start writing a paper without doing some thinking about the project first and get my mind ready and kind of come up with some ideas so I don't have to start from zero and so here is some of the brainstorming and pre-writing that I did when thinking about writing a paper like this so in the Taming of the Shrew. We have the Sweet Sister who is pictured here. This is an image from the Internet Movie Database website. And as you can see, she is portrayed in some scenes at least as angelic and beautiful and all that good stuff. And so she's the Sweet Sister. And then the Shrew, um, a Shrew is a small animal with a uh, kind of a high metabolism and a crabby demeanor and it's small and it's kind of like a mouse but it doesn't act like a regular mouse and so we have the sweet sister and the shrew the older sister and so then we have courtly suitors who are college students and you know handsome young men who wish to woo Bianca and um, try to get her to marry one of them and they like her because she looks so sweet and acts so sweet at least to them and then there is the oafish suitor, Petruchio, who um, is played with lots of zest and zeal by um, Richard Burton. And I love some of the scenes, especially the one at the beginning when we meet him. And um, he has a big hole in his sock, which pretty much illustrates his entire character at the time. And so Petruchio goes to woo C Katharina as kind of a um, a way to marry a rich woman and make his life easier and so the gender issues explored by the play would be something I'd want to write about as well and the motives of the characters so Petruchio wants to woo Katharina to get money and Katharina doesn't really want to be involved with Petruchio at all except that she has been told for many years that she could never have a husband and is not suitable so there is a motive to marry him and prove herself and so we have the two main characters have some interesting motives which are not entirely pure 
And so, who would Mencius have considered the good characters in the play? And are there bad characters? And what are their reasons for being bad? And are they truly bad, or do they redeem themselves at the end of the movie? And as I've seen um, some lovely discussions on our discussion board, what really does make a person bad or evil, or good for that matter? And then I would outline my ideas for the paper. And in the introduction, I would tell about why I chose this film and what's interesting about it. I mean, it's Shakespearean, so of course, as an English professor, that's right up my alley. Um, although I fell in love with the film way before I became an English professor. And it's um, gorgeously filmed, and the actors are fascinating. And um, as far as I'm concerned, there was no one who... Um, who lit up the screen like Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton in this film and several others like Cleopatra. And then meeting the characters, uh, sweet Bianca cannot marry until her older crabby sister is married and there's some very lovely fight scenes uh, between Bianca and Katharina and Katharina and Petruchio so there's lots of excitement and there's even some actual literal feathers flying at one point and then flocks of young men compete for Bianca's attention hoping that she will marry one of them and none of them want Katharina and she feels neglected and disrespected and acts out her feelings in sometimes inappropriate ways and then it appears that Bianca was born good and Katharina was born bad and so then we might explore the setting of the play in our paper and its effect on the characters and they live uh, Katharina and Bianca live in a beautiful home in Padua Italy they have servants their father is rich and he adores Bianca and then having a rich father sets up certain expectations of behavior and experience and pardon me appearance and so it could be that Katharina does not let get to use her skills and is expected just to look attractive and behave exactly as she is told so then I would like to analyze the character's growth or lack of it throughout the film. At the beginning, Katharina is angry and bitter and loud and kind of violent. Uh, Bianca seems to be sweet, but there are definite hints of negative behavior. For instance, is she just maybe a little bit too uh, cute with her sister and, you know, possibly causing a little of the conflict herself. And then Bianca's suitors compete using deception as one of their tools, so they're not entirely above board. And of course, part of the deception is um, getting Petruchio involved. And at the beginning, Petruchio is dirty, drunken, and broke, and really quite the mess. And so the conclusion, after I explore all that growth or lack of it, is who was really good and who was only faking it or just thought they were good but they really weren't and so I might explore Mencius's views about goodness some more so that I can justify using his um, it material as one of my sources and blend it in better and then look at the last few scenes of the film when Petruchio and Kate seem to be happy and even kind to each other maybe and of course the taming of the shrew is one of Shakespeare's problematic plays in which some people think it is tremendously sexist and others seem to think that maybe uh, there is some redemption at the end and some kindness and respect and I kind of prefer to see the movie that way and then what if we are documenting material from the film in this paper that we're writing or talking about writing at the end of the taming of the shrew Katharina says that and this is a quote and this is the title of the movie which is our first element on the works cited page and there's two ways to document a film in MLA style at least according to the Purdue Owl so you can either start with the title of the play or you can start with who you think is the most important 
person who uh, worked on the play or movie like Zeffirelli, the uh, director, or you can even use the actor's names first. So I had a little bit of a conundrum, but I decided to go with the title of the film first in my works cited list, and therefore that's what goes into the citations. And of course, there are no page numbers in a film, so I leave those out in the citations. And so at the end of The Taming of the Shrew, as I said, we have this quote, and here is my citation. However, after Katharina bows before Petruchio in a fiery public speech, then he holds out his hand, inviting her to rise to meet him as an equal, and says, Come on and kiss me, Kate. And here we have another citation. So that's how I would document material from the film. And this is kind of my way of ending my... Uh, paper as it were. And then what if we are documenting material from the part of the textbook written by the editor? So you have probably noticed in your textbook that there's some material that the editors write about our authors and uh, they write questions at the end of the sections by our famous authors and so those sections are written by the editor of the book Michael Austin and so if this is background material written by our editor and we quote it we would qu put quote marks around it and cite it from the name Austin because that is the person who wrote that material and he gets the credit for his words and ideas However, if we are documenting material from an essay, poem, or story written by one of our famous authors like Mencius or Plato, then what we would do is we would actually quote it from the person who wrote the original piece. We all have a heart of compassion and a heart of conscience, says Mencius on page 80. So we don't document that from Austin anymore. We still put that source on the work cited and we do give Austin credit as the editor of the anthology, but we give credit for the words that Mencius said or wrote so long ago with the citation like this here. And then when we write our paper, document all your material from sources as you go. Do not try to go back and do the documentation later. That can cause accidental plagiarism and it's dangerous. And your paper should be at least 75% your own words and ideas. Documented material from sources should not take over the paper. You are the most important voice in your paper. And then as you are completing the writing process, reread your paper, then revise it and proofread it, and turn it in on time and give yourself a big pat on the back. And then this is my works cited list. Now I did not include the images on the works cited, I just included the text as I would in a regular paper. Um, in a paper I would not even have illustrations, but a PowerPoint presentation is pretty boring without some images. And so here we have an alphabetized works cited list with a hanging indent. Every first line of the cite or pardon me, the references listing or the works cited listing starts at the margin. And then if we have a second line, it's indented. And if we have a second and a third line, they're indented as well. And then we are italicizing book titles and film titles. And then this is the one way that I chose to document the movie. So you can look this up on the Purdue OWL or you have a lot of material in your textbook that can help you with documentation. And so I recommend that you um, look up your documentation every time. Don't try to memorize all this stuff. And I hope you all have a great week and please feel free to ask me any more questions if you have them about writing our papers or anything else. Thank you. Bye-bye.